Hey, and welcome back. Just over a year ago now, I built a set of concert toms from a number of cheap orphan drums I had in my inventory. This was a fun project and a great way to use these drums as they really didn't serve much purpose individually. At that time, I was able to build a set of four toms with eight, 10, 12, and 13 inch drums. I invested very little in terms of materials other than the spray paint and the tom brackets, and at the end of the project, I was left with plenty of paint and two more brackets to use later. The video I released on this project has gotten really nice traction, and at the end of the video, I noted how I found out I already owned a 14 inch tom shell that I somehow didn't think to use at the time, and put out a call to ask if I should consider adding 14 and 16 inch drums to this set of concert toms. I received an overwhelming amount of people requesting that I build the additional drums, so now seems like a good time as ever to go ahead and fulfill that request. Like I just said, I already had the 14 inch tom on hand, and over the last year, I was able to get this 16 inch floor tom from a nearby Goodwill for just about $10. The 14 inch tom is an older CB700 and featured these really large lugs, which were different than the style I used on the original concert toms, but luckily when I went to check the hole pattern, it was exactly the same. In addition, this drum also had a variety of pipe clamps screwed onto the shell, which I'm guessing was due to somebody trying to mod this drum into a floor tom at some point. The 16 inch drum was a Mark II, which is just some cheap generic import brand and it's actually the same brand as the drums I used for the 12 and 13 inch drums for the original concert toms. It was missing a few lugs due to some of them being broken or rusted out, but overall, this drum wasn't in terrible shape. So I began this project like almost every other project I do, stripping all the hardware off these drums. After getting all the tension rods, hoops, heads, lugs, and various other brackets off the shells, I could remove the wrap. Typically, on these cheaper drums, they use very little adhesive, so I can just take a razor blade to the seam of the wrap, cut it open, and pry it off with my hands. If need be, I'll use a heat gun to help loosen the adhesive, but in this case, it wasn't necessary. Next, I took these drums upstairs to use a drill and countersink bit to drill out the grommets on each shell, and then I used a heat gun to get rid of a little bit of residue left on the 14 inch shell. After I had each of these shells completely bare, I could take them over to my table saw and cut them down to their final depth. I wanted these drums to be proportionate to the other toms I had already built, and they are a bit shallower than traditional toms, so what I ended up with here was the 14 inch drum being 7 inches deep, and the 16 inch drum being 9 inches deep. After getting them cut down, I was able to begin filling any extra holes on the shell with wood filler and plugs. On the 14 inch shell, I had a larger hole from where the tom mount was, and I ended up cutting a plug for this with the hole saw on the leftover scrap from the cutoff. This is a great option because you could be sure that the plug you cut will be the right profile and thickness to fit perfectly in the shell. For the smaller screw holes, I could just use wood filler and I took the same approach to this smaller piece of ply that was missing from the 16 inch shell. A lot of times on these cheaper drums, this can be common and a big reason why these shells are wrapped as opposed to stained or painted. Luckily, a single ply is pretty thin and the wood filler works well for this sort of thing. For any other larger holes left on the shell, I needed to use dowels to plug these holes. I was low on dowels, so I had to run over to my local hardware store to grab a few of various sizes, but luckily these are only a couple dollars each. Once I got home, I cut down some dowels and added plugs to each shell by using a small piece of dowel and then adding wood glue. Once these dry up a bit, I go back with a flush cut saw and trim the leftover before coming back with a sander to get them smooth with the shell. After everything had dried, I came back with a sander and got the entire shell sanded and looking good in order to begin painting. For the inside of the shells, I went with a flat black paint and for this, I didn't need to worry too much about overspray or taping because I'd be painting the outside of the shells after. When I did this the first time around, I think I thought the black interior would be a cool look as it almost disappears inside, but in retrospect, I wonder if a colored inside and a black exterior could have looked even cooler. Let me know what you think down in the comments. After the black spray paint had dried, I took the shells over to my workbench to tape up any holes and the bearing edge to begin painting the outside. 
I then put these drums on my Lazy Susan wheel and added some scrap plywood below and on top to prevent any overspray from getting inside the shells. In addition to this first coat, I did another one to two coats off camera. And honestly, on the 14 inch shell, I had to go back and sand a bit more where the adhesive still showed pretty bad. But again, I didn't catch any of that on camera. While waiting for the paint to dry, I went downstairs and took the hardware I had and soaked it in some WD-40 to clean it off a bit. I have plenty of these cheap stamp lugs and they are notorious for shattering when they get tension too tight. So I like to try and clean them off a bit in order to hopefully break a few less of these along the way. Once the paint had dried, I went over the shells again with clear polyurethane to protect the finish and just get a little bit better look to these shells. The next day, I was able to remove the hardware from the WD-40 and begin drying it out in order to prep for reassembly of these shells. While I waited for the hardware to dry, I took these shells over to my desk to drill out new holes for the tom brackets. These brackets were super cheap, but they work fine and they fit on most size tom arms. Once the hardware dried out, I could begin adding lugs back to the shell and then add the heads, hoops, and tension rods. I did add some white lithium grease to the tension rods before tightening them down in order to reduce friction in the threads and hopefully avoid breaking any of these lugs, but I still managed to break one or two of them before getting everything back together. And one last final step before wrapping these drums up was to take some goof off and remove the logos on the heads. This is totally optional, but since all these drums had different logo heads, I just wiped them away to make it look more like a set and a little more uniform with matching clear heads. So now with these drums finished, I could take them over to the kit and record a demo while also pairing them up with my other four concert toms to complete this set of six drums.
So all in all, I'm now the proud owner of a set of six matching concert toms with 8, 10, 12, 13, 14, and 16 inch sizes. I'd be lying if I told you I use these regularly, but I believe it was a great use of these materials, and the investment for all six of these drums is super low. For the final two drums I built in this video, my only investment was $10 for the 16 inch floor tom. So when you add that to the $50 I spent the first time around, that brings this project to a grand total of $60 all in for a set of six matching concert toms. If I could do this project all over again, I think I'd probably change the approach when it comes to the color. The green is pretty polarizing, and over the last year I've seen plenty of comments on the first video with strong distaste for that finish. I briefly thought about refinishing the first four drums as I ventured onto these final two, but honestly, I just didn't feel like prolonging this project out any longer than I did, and I was able to complete these last two drums start to finish in just about two days, even with the paint and finishing. I did a video a while back painting the inside of a shell with aluminum fence paint to match some Gretsch drums I have, and I think that could be a cool finish for the inside or outside of these shells. I also think black exterior for these shells, with each drum having a different interior color, could be a cool look as well, so maybe one day I'll be motivated to refinish these drums and try something like that. But for now, I'm pretty content with this set of drums as they are, and I'm ready to call this project a wrap. So please don't leave me a comment telling me to build a matching bass drum or snare. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate it if you give it a thumbs up, and consider subscribing to my channel to stay up to date on future video releases. And until next time, thanks. Thank you.